Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Local Stoic here with another top 11 video for your head top. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about top 11 and all the new things that are about the game. Now, I recently did a video of this just about maybe a month ago, but the audio quality was pretty bad and it was one of my first one of my first real top 11 videos where I was being consistent, just trying to be consistent on the channel. And um, I just kind of put it out there and I noticed that there are a lot of persons that are new to the game. Um, I've been on the reddits and I've seen where persons are asking for tips, um, new players that are just coming into the game with the 3D update and all that. So these are just some of the things I want to talk about for the new players coming into the game. There was one person in particular that was on my channel he commented on my previous video that hey any tips on new, for new people i'm like hey i'll make a video just for you so margin marlin i think your name was this video is for you man um if you comment on this one i'll just pin you in the comments so everybody knows yo this video is for my boy marlin so top 11 welcome to top 11 everybody welcome to the new 3d update I'm your boy Local Stoic. I've been playing the game for, by the game statistics, eight months, season eight. Every season that you go into, it's basically a month. So if you're season eight, if you're level eight, if you're level 14, that means you've been playing the game for 14 months. So that's basically how long I've been playing the game, eight months. So I'm no super long player of the game, but I can say I have enough experience with playing the game because I've been playing consistently every single day for eight months so let's just get right into some of the things that we can talk about my team is called Nova FC that's the first thing you have a name of your team now for persons who are new there are very different tactical things that you can do in the game for yeah this video is going to be a long one guys oh friends always support your friends on this channel i'm going to support every single match that comes up but i'm not going to watch it because i'm talking about something with you guys um so for tactics in top 11 there is attack and then there is defense you can set your offensive tactics with the team mentality the passing focus the passing style and counter attacks now these options vary from mentality you have defending defensive hard defending defensive normal attacking hard attacking you guys know all of them now different combinations of these carry different results and the same for the defense different combinations of defense carry different results as you guys know and if you combine a different defensive tactic with a different offensive tactic you also get a different result so there is no one sure way on how to win in top 11 there's no sure one way on how to defend properly how to attack properly because your formation that you have and the players that you have also impact how your tactics perform but generally speaking if you tell your players hey attack down the flanks using long balls you know that whatever formation you have they're going to be sending long balls over to the flank you know that regardless of the formation so it's just a matter of finding an advantage over your opponent and trying to exploit that advantage now it doesn't always work because if their quality of your players are lower then it's going to be a lot harder to break down a higher opposition but nothing is impossible if you guys go through my videos you can see where i pulled off some of the greatest comebacks i've ever seen in football history in this game so i think they i think so anyway let me know what you guys think been to many finals i've been to every single champions league final i've been to every single cup final that i've entered except my first my very first season which i was new to the game i didn't know anything i figured it all out on my own so maybe i had one friend mark he had experience in the game but he also didn't really know much 
when I started playing and he realized that I started playing, that's when he started playing again. So yes, he's a higher level than I am, but he didn't really know much. So basically everything I learned, I learned on my own. And I'm now telling you guys how to be good at it. So your tactics is just trying to exploit your opponents. For my next match, you can see my opponent is playing a 4-1-4-1 V formation. Now, basically, he has two central midfielders and a defensive midfielder. So I know that having an attacking midfielder would be a disadvantage to me because that would be one player that would have a man directly on him. Now, I have three central midfielders. So for this, what I would do is to remove my attacking midfielder and I would use a wide player for this one. So that way his defensive midfielder would either get dragged out wide or would have to come further up or he'll be left in no man's land in that area if I move him. For example, let's say I get Huntley in, Gonzalez, and Huntley will play as a striker. So now I have two strikers playing high up the pitch. Now their defensive midfielder is left in no man's land basically because Jones is playing an attacking central midfield role. So he might have to come forward to meet Jones because Jones is not playing that far deep, that far high up the pitch, okay? So that's how I would exploit this particular opponent even if I am of a better quality, which I am, that's how I would exploit their weakness and use to my advantages. Now, I could also use my wide players and move them in a position. Now, if you notice, there's a line where Jones is. Now, that is the line between the central midfielder and the attacking midfielder. Now, your wide players being your left midfielder, he can also play an attacking wide role by advancing him beyond the line where Jones is. If you guys see that, I dropped him there. Now, the same thing can be done on the right-hand side. That's just a little tactic that you can use in your gameplay. Now, this would be the formation that I will use in this match. I'll show it to you guys. I'll play the same team and I'll play the same formation so you guys can see in the next match on the channel. So if you guys want to see how this tactic plays out, you can always watch the next video that comes out on the channel with this match. So that's how I would exploit this particular position and take advantage of their weakness. Now, they are basically doing the same thing, but instead they are actually using attacking. No, they are using the same thing. Left midfielder, right midfielder in an advanced role. So they are using basically the same tactics as I am, but I am using a midfield that has three now that is where i would have the advantage because they have two men in their midfield and i have three now i can either play through the middle or i can still play down the flank whatever it is i have an advantage in the middle of the park now once you have that advantage it's just a matter of quality and tactics tactics being whether you're going to be playing defensive or whether you're going to be playing attacking now that's just one way that's just one example of the different ways that you can exploit an opponent's formation to your advantage regardless of quality difference now i hope you guys tune in for the for that match so you can see how i perform this formation is basically a 3-2-3-2 formation it is not something that is new on the channel you guys can see that it is a very effective formation it just so happens that it works well with this particular one so i will use it so you guys can see how it performs now you will see that their defensive midfielder throughout the match he will be left in no man's land you'll see that he's either going to be dropping playing more advanced up the pitch to compete in the middle of the field or he'll be left in no man's land in the defensive midfield area or he's going to be dragged wide where he is weaker and Isimim will cut in because he is a you guessed it falls winger play style so that's how I will exploit their weakness now that's it for squad and tactics and 
stuff if you guys want to know any more about tactics feel free to link it in the comments i'll be sure to answer your questions any tactical questions that you might have but that's all i want to say about that for now um, moving on to training now training your squad is not hard it's very easy but what persons have a difficulty is maintaining their conditioning maintaining the entire conditioning of the squad now i have a squad of 22 players if i select all you'll see oh actually 24 um but i am going to be putting two of them on sale so that will be changing very very soon actually i'll put them on sale right now so you guys can see this is a academy graduate i'll get to that but i'll mention it now academy graduates they sell for a lot more money you can see a market value of fourteen thousand because he's young and he has good value so i'll just put him on sale for his maximum value because i know that i can get it for a 73 rated player now that's actually not the keeper that i want to sell oh yeah yeah it is my academy graduate sorry about that guys but yeah that's how you you want to sell your academy graduates at maximum value if you can so you always put them at the maximum value if you don't plan on using them in your squad i don't plan on using mine because i have another keeper i have three goalkeepers one that is better than him so i'll just sell him and use the other one develop him as well because if they're both developing i'll just end up not using him and that's just waste of money but anyways i have 24 players in my squad maintaining physio is not hard let me tell you why because i rotate squad rotation is very important if you have a weak team and you have a strong team use both your teams sometimes you might have to pick one or two players from the strong team to make up in the in the weak team to get some tactical advantage then you have to do so but you have to rotate your squads you'll be playing two matches per day one team is going to be better than the next one if you're playing two strong matches then you have to mix your team that's how you maintain squad position if you decide that you're going to play one team for both matches you'll have to watch ads in order to make up for the health or you'll have to use your rest rest is very expensive in the game i don't spend my coins on rest at all so i don't recommend it it's not worth it so that's why i recommend squad rotations mix and match your teams as best as possible to get an advantage if you have to play both your strong teams in order to advance to the next round of the competition or if it's a league match and you think that you have to win this league match in order to win the title then do that play your strongest team run them down into the ground and next day will come and then you can figure it out after watching a few ads and developing their conditioning so that's what i recommend for um maintaining conditioning watching ads and squad rotations now i typically use drills that are easy now if you use drills that are easy it makes it better it makes it much better to maintain squad conditioning because easy drills use less intensity use like 1.5 percent conditioning so it doesn't take much out of your players now the usual um sorry the usual drills that i use in combination is warm-up stretch ladders and then i would just use either skill drill one-on-one -on -one finishing or I will use pass go shoot I tend to use pass go shoot a lot because I want speed passing and shooting to be a skill that is running ripe through my squad so that's why I always use pass go shoot in most of my drills so I will sometimes straight out skill drill and put in one-on-one -on -one finishing but I always use two attacks three physical and mental and then one defense after that I do a third one that third one will then have two from each two attacks two defense and then I will just like maybe throw in a medium one there and then you use some easy 
for the physical and mental always use easy for the physical and mental when you throw in a medium for either a defense or attack now you do like this and then you do a third training drill there's a video on my channel i will link it in the description so you guys can check out that training video and that is the same drill that i use over and over and over throughout the season sometimes i mix and match and putting maybe a shooting drill or i'll put in a set piece delivery a shalom dribble but generally it's the same rotation a three physical and mental then two for each for all the other training but the first training is always three physical and mental two attacks with one defense the other two the other two training drills that should keep your bonuses at maximum right throughout the season your bonuses will always be at maximum and you want to be sure that you do the drills as soon as it goes back to 32 percent once once the game resets for me it resets at nine o'clock thereabout so once it gets to nine o'clock i know that i sign in and i run my run my drills get my bonuses up so that i'm ready for the next day that gives the game some time to recoup some conditioning before the next match Sometimes I have a match at six o'clock in the morning. My players are tired. I don't do my drills until after the first match in the morning. So I will play that match with my 8% bonus because it is much better to play a match with eight, with 32% bonus as opposed to playing with a tired squad. A tired squad will lose you the match. A 32% bonus squad, they can draw you the match if they are healthy. So always go to the match with healthy players. If you have to postpone training until after your first match, do that. But make sure for the second, before the second match, you do your training and you just rotate your players because they're going to be tired regardless. If you're the further you go in all the competitions, you're going to be playing more games towards the end some other team they're going to drop out of their competition so they're going to be having better condition players than you for some games and that's okay so 17 minutes in and we've talked about training squads tactics transfers no transfers for this match no not for this match sorry <laughs> for transfers auctions are what i recommend in getting players no you don't want to buy players at the end of the season for those persons who are new to the game this is a perfect time to get players at the beginning of the season as you can see from my home page this is day two of 28 so the season is still young you go to the transfers a lot of activity is going to be there if you look on the high high rated players you're going to see lots of persons bidding up to 17 tokens um 17 tokens for high rated players and that's normal you're going to see bids in that range for five star players and up that's normal so i recommend only spending 15 to 17 tokens on players in the auction you don't want to spend 20 tokens on any player in the auction if they are 99 rated and you can manage to snipe a 20 a 90 percent rated token a 90 percent rated player for 20 tokens then by all means snipe it but generally speaking you don't want to be spending more than 15 tokens in this auctions why because just for an additional 10 you can walk away with a six star rated player from the scouting now these are the cheaper ones at the bottom 39 tokens is usually the cheapest they get sometimes you might find them for 37 but if you wait until four days is left in the negotiation sorry four days is left in the season which would be about day 26 yeah negotiations negotiations now in this list when it opens in 19 days you'll see players who are rated 99 percent now you can get these players for about 15 tokens you can get one for like 16 tokens 14 tokens these players are well worth it because here's why 
they will lose a star for the new season if you get them at the end of the season. However, it doesn't take one or two match plus three training sessions to get them to that fifth star. So what you will be buying basically is a five star player for the upcoming season. That is exactly what happened with my goalkeeper. Now, if you take a look at the goalkeeper that I bought last season from the negotiations window, he is rated 79% in this new season. Yes, I bought a 31 year old goalkeeper because he is still a good quality, especially because he has a special ability. Now, I don't know if this special ability is going to be effective because last season, when the game had just updated, special abilities were basically useless. You had one-on-one -on -one stoppers in goalkeepers who were basically unable to save one-on-ones. You had one-on-one -on -one strikers who could not score one-on-ones versus goalkeepers. So hopefully his play style and special ability not play style, sorry. His special ability will be effective. Now, that's how you deal with negotiations from the transfers. Now, that's what, those are my tips that I recommend for transfers. Now, auctions, don't spend more than 15 tokens. If you're gonna buy a player from the auctions, make sure it is a four star, almost five star player. So for example, this is a good player to buy, 76. It's gonna take, a couple matches and some training sessions to get him to that fifth star but if you do it early in the season he'll be worth it for the rest of the season he'll get you to that semi-final he'll get you through that to that final if you need to he'll get you through to the quarterfinals because if you buy him at day two he'll get that fifth star before you get to the round of 16 of the cup or if you get to before you get to halfway in the season he'll get that fifth star because he's 76 rated so that's just one example this is a striker five stars it's good you can bid on this one i'll bid on it because he's a good striker i may not win but you know it's okay seven tokens is a good price to pay for a five star rated player the younger they are, the more expensive they will be. So the older ones are going to be a bit cheaper, but you'll have to snipe them. You'll have to be watching them and seeing how, how many persons are bidding and see. make sure that you don't buy a 30-year-old a player for more than 10 tokens from the auctions. Just don't do that. It's not worth it. They're going down. They're not going to develop anymore. So. Don't buy a 70 rated player who is 30 years or older. They're not developing, they're only declining. Only unless you're desperate. And please, don't pay more than 10 tokens for that goalkeeper. They're not gonna be worth it, all right? So be careful of, be mindful of their age and be mindful of their statistics because statistics meaning their skills and their numbers because they won't be developing if they are too old. And if they're younger, they will develop faster and their price will be more expensive so it just depends on how much you're making at your club and what's your quality at your club so it's basically you as a manager and maintaining so those are my tips for transfers training youth academy youth academy oh boy youth academy is it's a very important thing for your club because this is where you're going to make a lot of your money and this is where you can get a lot of skilled players. Now, it is only the second day of the season. I have not yet received my new candidates. I'll make a video for that when that time comes, which should be tomorrow. So not much I can say about the Youth Academy right now, but because of the level where I am at, I had developed my stadium my youth training, my youth academy to level 10. That is what allowed me to be able to host four slots in my youth academy. So you want to make sure that you develop your youth academy to level 10 as soon as you're possible able to, so you can have more players coming in from your youth academy. That's the only tip I can give you as of now. There are going to be so much more I can talk about, but I'll have to show you. So we'll skip over that for now. Fixtures. 
you want to pay attention to your fixtures just to be ahead of your team and know what matches are coming up what difficult matches are coming up for day one day two so you know that every other day you have a cup match every other day you have a champions league match every single day you have a league match so you know that you're going to have at least two matches as you go throughout the season now there are going to be some more additional friendlies competitions that you might have to participate in so those are just some other third matches that you might have for the day so just to be ahead of your fixtures pay attention to it check them regularly and see the hard teams and the easy teams so you can know when to rotate your squad league still not open yet opens on day three so i have to wait until tonight to see the champions league now for the champions league tips and tricks now for the champions league you want to make sure that you check every single group check all the groups go through them see the competition I already did so I don't have to go through it right now but you go through all the groups check the competition and see what they look like because you'll have to plan your Champions League route because at the knockout stage some of these persons you don't want to be on the same side of the the bracket you don't want to be on the same side because you're trying to get to the final if you can make it to the final it is very possible for you to win the competition regardless of how better the opponent might be in certain in, in terms of statistics or skills or players i just showed you how you can exploit your opponent just from one tactical um perspective oilers fell into the super league that's unfortunate I played Oilers maybe two seasons ago in the Champions League. He made it into the, the semi-final, but somehow he fell to the, the Super League. Anyways, I was talking about the Champions League. Now, yeah, Oilers is a friend that I he keeps playing, so I just add him as a friend. You want to make sure you add friends. They send you things in the game that you can use. Now go through make sure you go through all your champions league group because you don't want to end up on the same bracket as all the hard players because you can get knocked out in either the quarterfinal the semis the round of 16 whichever and that will land you in the super league you don't want to be in the super league yet so <laughs> you want to stay in the champions league now the game seems to have frozen the super league there so we'll go back and forth there to see the super league now after going through all the group in the champions league going through the opponents you can plot your own champions league route what bracket are you going to finish first in the group or are you going to finish second in the group for me personally i have very tough opponents 70 rated 80 rated and 86 rated so it is going to be a hard fight for me to get out of this group to finish either first or second but i will be taking it one game at a time and plotting my route i already think finishing first would be better for me but i don't want to say that yet because a lot of the other opponents might be very good and i might just finish second just so i can make it to the finals as i said it is important for you to pay attention to your matches and your fixtures and plot your way to victory the core of the game is to win titles win as many titles anyhow you have to win i'm not saying you should throw the games Th don't don't throw a game just to finish second but if that's what it takes to get to the final so you can win a trophy or have a chance at winning a trophy i suggest that you do it so that's how i win all my titles which we will get to so in the cup competition the first round i just managed to edge my way through in the first leg i did win one nil and then in the second leg more of the same they were a tough team to break down um it was a difficult match both rounds as you can see we they they had a better team than us so it was a tough tough match but it was more so exploiting their weakness as you can see from the lineups they were playing a 4-4-2 system with advanced wing backs now i exploited that by playing defensive 
wide players and going through the middle with multiple persons so now they i had three midfielders and an attacking midfielder which again was in no man's land he was empty and open and the striker was also there so that's how i exploited that so i could edge that one nil victory now that's another way how you exploit your opponents from a defensive perspective instead of an offensive perspective when they are of a better quality now you move on to the round two of the cup you'd have very little control over who you play you just have to play every match as you go make sure you win and that's basically what you have to do for the cup now events events happen throughout the season various events wins you different things into the game from players to emblems to jerseys to different pitch designs various things you just gotta stay tuned associations this is a very 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 important one associations is a way to make tokens now i am in an association that i created myself it was not easy to recruit persons who were active in the game to say the least i have fortunately recruited persons who play every now and again they don't sign in every day they don't use the chat every day but every now and again someone will pop in and send a chat when it comes on to the weekends which this was last weekend it becomes a little bit more active persons are sending training requests so they can develop their training bonuses which it's only active on the weekends so you get tokens from your associations this association i brought it to silver one or rather we brought it to the silver one level from bronze three all the way to gold three now we are in gold three but because the new weekend has not yet come yet, or rather the new tournament hasn't started yet it starts in three days and 14 hours so once that starts we'll be in the gold three promoted we'll be promoted to gold three now in gold three you get five tokens for coming first place and four for coming second whereas in silver one as you can see you got four tokens for coming first and in gold three you get the same four for coming second so the higher you go the more tokens you get so you want to make sure that you find yourself a very good association and stay good an active association is better than one that is inactive because an active one they'll always climb they'll eventually climb but at some point if they suck and they're not winning any games you have to leave that association you have to leave that association and find a new one or as i did try to build my own and hope good players find me or i go to the reddits and recruit good players players are always on the reddits looking for associations or associations are always looking for active players so that's as much as i can say about associations and their importance you get tokens from them and recruitment can be done from the player level or you can search for an association itself but i'm already in one so i can't search one so anyways that's how you get into that's all i can say about the associations and their importance very important for getting tokens now the club my club home kit away kit I started playing in 2021 in October as I said to this day that would be just about eight months so that's my team and those are my jerseys that I have accumulated over the eight months that I've been playing couple em emblems sorry <laughs> um, but I just continue using the same old one that I started with because I, none of the other ones attract me maybe the carnival one but no nah. anyways season stats these are for the season eight that just started two wins so far no losses no draws and then all-time stats i've played eight seasons this is my eighth season so i've already completed seven seasons i've won six league titles so i've only ever lost league once i've been to seven yeah seven champions league finals i've won four of them 
four consecutive Champions League finals. I've been to, I've won all four of them. And three, I've been to four cup finals, but I only won three. I lost the one the other day versus Cute Penguin. That's also on the channel. You can go watch that match. It was, it was a smashing defeat. And the Super Cup. Every time that I have won the Champions League, I've gone on to win the Super Cup by almost default. So these are my all-time stats. You can see I create hella goals. I don't concede much. My assist record is with a player that is still active at my club, Balaz, with 77 goals and 36 assists. And appearance, Ricky Ricketts, the first supernova of the club. There's a video on the channel about Ricky Ricketts. You can go check that one out for more. Um, longest win streak, 22, 38. Those are just some club stats that you guys might like. As a manager, there are different objectives that, you know, you can win. I still have not yet figured out what international cup trophies are. I, th I just think that is something that you unlock at a higher level of the game. I don't know. But in all my seasons, which was season seven, which was last season, I won three cups, as you can see, came second in the cup. Previous season, that was the season that I lost the league, but I still somehow managed to win the Champions League, which was an exciting match against Sura Rakyat. That's also on the channel. Go check that one out. Previous season, I won the quadruple. Exciting, exciting season also on the channel. This season, only got two, the cup and the league. Season three, I did the quadruple. That was the first time. It was a mad thing. It is also on the channel. Season two, won the league. Third in the cup in the Champions League. So, you guys can see, we have been doing the rounds. I have been doing the rounds. I have been winning things without spending cash on the game. Now, club finances. Wow, this is a long ass video. I hope I don't have to make another one like this for a while. Fa season finances. Um, you get tokens for your TV rights. Generally, I use the OH because that gives you the most tokens. You get 35 throughout a 10 day period. Just for logging in, you sign in, you get a token every other day. Every four days you come back, you get an extra one. So you get two on every, you get two every four days. So that's basically the TV rights tokens that I use. Um, the sponsorship for cash, I alternate that one. I generally use the Clockwork Monkey because it's the easiest one to maintain. It goes on for seven days and you get 30% more. However, when it comes down to maybe day three of the TV rights, I don't renew the seven day one for clockwork. I switch to juice and I use the daily contract for three days because I get 40% more. I use it for three days so it can wind down to another day to the same day that the TV rights sponsorship ends. So I kind of maximize on my profits of cash and tokens and also the ease of maintaining. So once I sign the 10 day OH contract, I sign the clockwork one on the same day. So I don't have to pay attention to any contract for another seven days until I have to sign the juicy contract for three days for just until this one comes back around again now that's just how i do it so i can maximize on my finances at my club very little else you can do special sponsors these are just things that you get um, throughout the season these are targets that you can shoot for if you want to get some rewards there are some cool rewards i don't buy or spend money on the game so i don't have premium i get the regular ones at the top I've already gotten the health pack, boost pack, and the positioning attribute, which I gave to one of my players. I have a few more. I always try to aim to get to the academy overall coach. This one. Once I get to this one, I know that, okay, this was a successful season in terms of rewards from the special sponsor on my behalf. How do you get to these rewards? I'll tell you in a minute. As soon as I support my friend. No, none of these guys are my friends. So 
was just I won't affect this game. I'll just let the game decide. Randy's already 4-0 up on aggregate, so he might just win that one. Moving on back to the club finances. That was a waste of time. Sorry. How do you unlock the rewards from the special sponsors? You unlock them by completing tasks. This one, it says I'm supposed to buy three players who have more than 80%. Now, I've already bought one this season. I don't intend on buying any more players, so I might not unlock that one. But let's see how the season goes, right? Start three league matches with training and individual bonuses at max. Now, this one, it, it happens over time. As I said, some of these you just keep going throughout the season and they will automatically unlock. All you have to do, come back here to the special sponsor screen and claim them. Once you claim them, that's how you get the rewards. That's how you unlock the rewards in the special sponsor. And again, I consider a successful season after getting the Youth Academy coach. Everything else after that is just additional. And it's a lot harder to get, especially if you're not putting money into the game that's all i can say for the club no club finances no tickets tickets for your league games you always want a full stadium in the league matches because home advantage is a real real thing you need as much bonus your league ticket prices can affect your attendance if the prices are too high the stadium won't be full and you lose your bonus so you want to make sure that there's a good balance between ticket prices. I just use $4. This is not a recommended amount. I can charge up to $10, but I don't charge that much because I just want a full stadium and always, always never have to worry about that. So I just use cheap tickets to make sure I get maximum bonus. And it also gives you a good little amount of ticket sales money. So ticket sales money, it's low, but you always get the maximum amount right as opposed to putting it at 10 and then sometimes if you're not performing that well fans might not show up to the stadium so you don't get a full stadium but once the tickets are super cheap you will always even if you're doing poorly they will still show up to the game just because the tickets are cheap so that's how i maintain a full bonus and just collect money from ticket prices from champions league games it's the same thing now the win bonus a lot of people don't know but i'll let you guys know if there's a win bonus the players it affects them they play harder they play a little bit better and that's how i won a champions league versus surya rikyat guys you can go check that 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 match out it was a super super exciting match Go check it out guys that's how i won because i turned the champions league bonus up and make sure the players know that hey if you win you get a bigger bonus and the same thing for the ticket prices i kept it low so i have a full stadium same thing for the cup i want my knockout competitions to have bonuses because hey if you guys win you deserve that bonus because we are getting more money the further we go into the competition for the friendlies and fa's I also keep that price low. FAs are definitely harder to get fans to fill the stadium. And it's the same thing for friendlies. Fans don't necessarily always attend friendlies if the prices are too high. So that's why it's the only one that's at $2. Because if I raise it to 4 similar to the league, I won't have a full um, match bonus in the FAs or the friendly matches so that's what i will say about the finances section of the game now the grounds a lot to cover here utilities this helps you in getting merchandise finances the higher level this is the more money you get from merchandising the stadium you have to upgrade things here in order to to go and progress further into the game the more you upgrade, the more seats you get, the more tickets you can sell, and the more money you get. The same thing for the scoreboard. You enhance the scoreboard so it attracts a lot more players in, a lot more fans into the stadium. Lights are needed so you can host finals. Just maximize the lights. They're very cheap. 
no more than maybe 20,000 to get to the maximum level. And the same thing for the pitch. A better pitch gives you a better performing team. Now, I don't know if any one of these guys are my friends. I hope so. Guess not. Moving on to the grounds. A better pitch gives you a better performing team now if you guys if it if there was a possibility to upgrade you would see that a level 9 it offers pitch drainage now this drainage will allow our team to perform better at home in that it reduces i think 30 percent injury um injury chance it reduces the, the chance of injury by 30 percent i think that's what it does when you increase the pitch it increases it decreases injury and increases player performance at home so that's what you have to do for the parking parking also affects your attendance if your parking lot needs to be upgraded you can tell by the number of persons attending the match let's say you have a stadium capacity of 40,000 but there are only 37,000 persons in the fans. You know that you your ticket prices are low and you know that you are performing well. So why aren't 3,000 fans attending your home games? That's probably because they don't have anywhere to park. You will come here and you can check and see that it needs to be upgraded. You'll get a notification in the game that says, hey, fans are having trouble with parking. That's why you don't have a full stadium. So all you have to do, Come upgrade your parking. Make sure that it is at the highest possible level to attract and fit the number of fans attending your stadium. Medical. You get treatments from your medicine department and it also helps in reducing the possibility of injury and also it increases the recovery time. Increases? no it decreases the recovery time so your players heal quicker and they also have a less chance of injury serious injury because there's a medical team just outside the stadium to attend to them so at the beginning of the game you might be getting injuries for like six days because your medical department is pretty poor so you have to upgrade your medical department and those six day injuries they'll just go down to maybe a three day injury so instead of having an ACL for eight days, you might have an ACL for like four days because it was attended to quicker. So that's the logic of the medical department. That's the tip that I have for that one. For the training, no. Training is a much more geared towards the players. You get better performing quality, enables great training irrespective of weather conditions and stuff like that. Now, you can upgrade this to get even better performance from your players regardless of weather. So that's why it is important to upgrade them. So basically, every single thing on the ground has its own purpose. Youth Academy, the higher the level of the Youth Academy, you attract better opposition. You, no, sorry, you attract better talent and you get more slots in your Youth Academy. That's basically what you get from upgrading your youth academy and you want to maximize that better quality gives you better players better players give you more money or if you're not interested in selling youth players it gives you a better team to build on so that's what you get for the grounds and the game is freaking out last but not least community feed Various things happen here throughout the season. You want to check this because constantly there are updates there that you can win things and stuff like that. And the shop, which I hardly ever visit because I don't spend money on the game. So yeah, and I don't waste my tokens on these things. Maybe sometime in the future when I get higher association, I will do that. But for now, I don't really use those functions of the game. There's a lot more that you can talk about in top 11 but those are the important things that i can point out off the top of my head i hope this video helps all the new persons in the game because this is a very good time to start playing top 11 new 3d update as well as 
it is a fresh start to a season so it's a good time to get good control over your squad and charge them to victory in the season so hope you guys enjoyed the video it was a long one if you did hit the like button if there is anything that i might have missed that you wanted to talk about let me know in the comments below if there's any other tips that you might want to ask hit me up on reddit hit me up on the socials local stoic peace out